done. Welcome. It's the 21st of July. This is 2022. This is European Documentation Office Hours for Jenkins. Uh, topics I've got on the agenda include action items, news, Blue Ocean status message, change log entries from multiple repositories, search improvements for the doc site, commercial support page proposal, and upcoming change log, and a look and feel improvements pull request that I think actually I'd like to adjust this one to be higher on the agenda so that we make sure we get to it because it's, I think it's a really important one. All right, and this one probably should go up. Actually, the, yeah, what that really means is this one can go down like that. Okay, so there's a draft proposal for an agenda. Anything, Bruno, you need to add? Uh, no, thank you, Mark. Okay, then. First items on the action items, I'm sorry to report that I still have not made progress on my action items, and it's going to be several weeks before I can. They're just, these things have to wait. Uh, on news, Jenkins 2.360 released, and it has a new configuration page for, um, I think it's freestyle projects. Oh, really? I installed it today, but haven't yet uh, tried it. Yeah, it's, it, it moves, the, moves the navigation links, the in-page navigation links from the top bar. To the left, I guess. Exactly, to the side panel, where they're much easier to see, much easier to detect. Uh, and and it, I like the look very much. Now, uh, the, yeah. For instance, the folders plugin does not yet have that change. Okay, I've seen uh, a few demos. I have to try that. Right, and the the UX sig in uh, recording from recently includes a, a demonstration of it. Mm -hmm. Then we had Pipe Google Summer of Code presentations today, including a presentation by Vihan Fora. Uh, on pipeline steps doc generator. And thanks very much to Vihan. We're already seeing improvements on the, the pipeline steps pages and very grateful to him for that. Now we've got a, a, a new topic here or a, a topic we had before the look and feel improvements page pull request has been through some iterations. And I think it's, I really do think it's ready to, to merge. Uh, let's do a, sh a look at it just to see here. So this page, notice the the gradient blues mm -hmm. and the consistent color for the download button here. The yes, the jumbotron continues to navigate, and we retain the other layouts. Now, one of the things that has may have to change is the plugin site. Yeah. May need we may need to coordinate with it as to how we whoops I have to go this direction mm -hmm. there because the plugin site borrows or or grabs content from Jenkins that I to keep its look and feel consistent so I need to check with with Gavin Mogan I was considering should we open for more feedback uh, by posting that hey this is a proposed new look for the site to community.jenkins.io. Bruno, what do you think? Is that a, a an okay thing to do? Saying, hey, oh, here's here's the new look. What do you think? Yes, uh, I totally agree with you. You should do that if you have time to. Yes, community.jenkins.io is a place to be when talking about UI changes and so on. I think a lot of our users are in community.jenkins.io. Of course, they're also in Gitter, but yes, to have a discussion with things that stay that we can have a look at uh, when we're not in the craze of discussing. Yeah, community.jenkins.io, definitely. Good, okay, so I'll I'll do that because I can do that in just minutes. That's easy to do, so. Thank you, Mark. So yes, and, and then, and coordinate with, uh, with Gavin on the final merge. Great, all right, thank you. So, so I'll take care of that one. 
then we've got a new an additional pull request uh, that Kevin Martins has submitted. He's proposing that we add, based on a request from Gavin Mogan, that we make it more clear that Blue Ocean is not being actively developed, that it's yeah. being maintained, that bugs, critical bugs are being fixed and, and security issues are being resolved, but not new enhancements. And so what he's prepared is this change and he reviewed it with Gavin. And Gavin, I think is, is a generally agreed I don't see an approval yet, but for me, I think it looks good so far. I wanted to show how it looks and ask mm -hmm. for some feedback here. So in this case, if we look at the documentation on Blue Ocean, it's not, the disclaimer is not in the first page. And so this is one where I would want it in this page. And, and Kevin didn't put it there yet. So I think it, it should be here. Okay. And I'd... I'd almost think that we want it very high on this page, possibly even for sure. before the what is blue ocean or inside yeah. the what is blue ocean. I'm not sure which of those. Uh, we have seen lately a few posts in uh, community Jenkins of of people saying, what? <laughs> it's, it's not actively developing now? Uh, oh, too bad. I was enjoying that. So yeah, better tell them from the very beginning. Right, exactly. And and the fact that it is still very much usable and very, very much, we want to continue describing it. We don't want to yeah, take away these pages. For instance, on the creating a pipeline page here, I think he chose to, where did he insert it? I don't see it on this page, actually. Interesting. So I know, for instance, he did it on this page, on the dashboard page. But for me, the surprise was where he put it was below the first screenshot. Mm -hmm. So it's it ends up below the fold for, you know, it requires page down before you see it. And I think we probably want it very early in yeah. the page. Uh, the trouble is I'm not sure if we want it as the first text that they see, maybe it is the mm -hmm. first text they see. You're, what do you think, Bruno? How have you seen this done in other cases or other places? Well, uh, I a big disclaimer on top of the page from the very beginning uh, so that you can't avoid it. You you know it there and you can't miss it. So okay. yeah, I would go at the very top of the page. Good, all right. So your tendency is put it put it very early. That's, yeah. that's mine as well. I think it's worth asking others. Let's see, Pipeline mm -hmm. Editor's another one where he inserted it. And here again, he inserted it below the first video and I'm prone okay. to want it um above maybe it should be not the first paragraph but after the first paragraph yeah but i i, I, I like because, it much better there than below the first video yeah because after the first video you getting excited by the product <laughs> and then you got to disclaimer a little bit too late right well and on okay on on a number of them this this example page here one of the challenges we had with this first video is there wasn't enough text above it mm -hmm. to put the video cleanly below the contents yeah. list on the right. By adding the disclaimer, we've clearly got enough text to put it above Two it. Two birds in one stone. <laughs> right, exactly. Two birds, one stone. So, okay. So I, th I think I take away from that, uh, prefer it higher on the page. Possibly after the very first paragraph. And if a page does not have a good first paragraph, then we need to create one. Mm -hmm. Create a strong first paragraph if one does not already exist. Good. Okay. Anything else on Blue Ocean status? Not on my side. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So we've got we've got an additional topic then search improvement. So what Gavin Mogan has observed is that some searches on www.jenkins.io have very poor results. And examples might be search for the word upgrade, mm -hmm. a, a not uncommon word. And it does not find right now the best pages for upgrades. So let's let's do that as an example. 
if I search for upgrade, JIRA upgrade for the Jenkins project. If I search for upgrade without pressing enter, mm -hmm. Windows installer upgrades, oh. Jenkins upgrade. So, so a Jenkins X. So there is nothing on this page that's really core to how you do upgrades in Jenkins. Whereas if we say site colon Jenkins.io upgrade, the Google search results take me to the LTS upgrade guide. Yeah. Or even so, within the, the GitHub website, uh, the repo for Jenkins.io, I think we could find more results. Okay. Exactly. So, so or to upgrading Java from Java 8 to Java 11, all more relevant than any of the, the results that came from this search. And what, what Gavin then did is he asked our search provider, Algolia, who's donated the search engine for us, what we can do to improve it. And their answer was, oh, uh-oh, you're running an outdated, um, outdated configuration you need to migrate from the legacy scraper to their new new technique what it is is we use they've donated a facility called doc search this is a, a facility they provide to open source projects where the, the open source project just informs algolia we're willing to have you scrape our site mm -hmm. and algolia will maintain all the indexes and everything without our infrastructure without jenkins infrastructure Okay. So, so they've changed, they've, they've upgraded, migrated, but we haven't done it yet. So this is sort of a development task that involves some integration and, and we need, need some time to follow their directions and uh, reconfigure the site. Ultimately, it will involve probably some small snippets of JavaScript that exists now will be changed to something else. Okay. Uh, is there something, a uh, utility uh, that we could use on our own fork, for example, just to see if the results get better with the new algorithm? Oh, that's a good question. Any way to evaluate the change yes. from, from old site to new? And I don't know. That's a good question. From legacy scraper. Yeah. Because we have to believe them, and of course we didn't pay for that. <laughs> that would be cool if we didn't invest too much time before realizing it doesn't work way right. better. Yeah, yeah, good, good question. Um, so I think what I want to do here is mark to create a Jenkins.io issue for this upgrade. I'm a little worried that. It may there may be a limit a very limited set of people who actually have control of of this part of the things, and so it's going to mm -hmm. take some some exploring. It may be Gavin and me are the only two people that have access. So so I think let's create get an issue created, and then we'll track it there. Anything else on the search improvement? Mm -hmm. No, nothing. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. So I've got another topic then. This one, I don't think, I don't think there's anything much for us to say there, is there? The next LTS baseline scheduled for September and the LTS will be baseline will be chosen, will be chosen next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's likely either 2.360 or 2.361. Okay. And, oh, one more point. I will be out next Friday. Yeah. And so may need to cancel next Thursday's meeting. Would that be okay with you, Bruno? Yes, for sure. Okay. So let, let's just mark to cancel the meeting next week. Great. All right. Okay. Next topic or anything else on other topics? No, no, no. Okay. So next topic for me was commercial support page. This is a proposal from Gavin Mogan that what he'd like to do is create a, a vendor, commercial vendors who are providing um, commercial support for Jenkins implementations. 
And there are several that do this. For instance, CloudBees does it. Red Hat, I believe, does it. There are other vendors in Europe who've done it. In the past, we had eight or 10, and we would highlight them on a wiki page. And his, his sample site was showing something like this, where we might say, there, yes, search for talk, yeah. that vendor. So his idea was, let's put it here. And this could be a, a series of results, mm -hmm. table of different choices with links to their support side or their training side or certifications that they may offer, those kinds of things, and which languages they support, which locations they support. Yes, and I think I've seen a proposal that you made today with another vendor. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so a, I, I submitted an additional data item uh, for um, another vendor. I didn't submit one, for instance, for Red Hat or for others in the Europe. And I think uh, we need more data from vendors for the prototype. Yeah, um, but do we know someone who is supposed to take care of contacting different vendors in order to have a consolidated, a curated list of, of official vendors? Yeah, I think I think that Gavin started that process. Okay, uh, may, we may also want to ask the outreach outreach sig to mm -hmm. um, contact potentials. So, for instance, uh, one member of our board of the Jenkins board, Evelina Vilkos, previously had worked for a company that provided these kind of things. I think her current employer does not, but she may know some, and she's a mm -hmm. strong Northern Europe contact. All right, so let's see others. And, and this is one where I'm not sure that, I guess maybe I should test something. There are certainly plenty of vendors who have, there's three or four or more vendors who, who have pages like this. Let's get download. These are vendors that are deploying Jenkins in the public cloud like AWS. And it's very much or Azure. But I wouldn't call them, I'm not sure I'd list them. Well, I don't know, maybe should we should we lobby that they be put on that list? Uh, they could be with a particle tag, maybe a label, but of course they maybe won't offer some consultancy if that's a word, but they can help with you deploying Jenkins in the cloud. So yes, it definitely should be part of that list. Right. Well, and that's that I think is is a, a maybe that's a, a question we bring to, mm -hmm. to Gavin yeah. is what if we were trying to describe how you do because these are certainly commercial vendors, right? They are very yeah. much commercial vendors and and they are very much doing things that help Jenkins and help users of Jenkins be successful. Yep. So, so it feels like, hey, that would be a good thing to mention them. Now, yeah. So maybe, okay, good. Let I'm going to put this in the notes here, and mm -hmm. discuss further adding cloud providers to the commercial vendors list. Although he may, Gavin may may be concerned there because I think his intent was commercial support vendors. Yeah. And, More of the, I was telling consultancy that's maybe not the right word, but yes, that's the initial idea of Gavin. Right. So, so at well, and and that's, I don't know if, if for instance Red Hat or IBM would say, hey, they are doing commercial support of Jenkins. They may say, no, what they're doing is mm -hmm. providing a Jenkins package that runs on OpenShift, and and that's different for them because they provide commercial packages that run on it, run nginx on openshift and and i'm not sure they would say that they are a commercial support vendor for nginx all right we'll have to discuss that okay yes yeah, so uh discuss yeah so raise the question to the community forum discuss there good okay Anything else that comes to your mind on commercial support, Bruno? 
Not for the time being. Thank you. Okay. My last topic then, or last, yeah, last topic, then let's take this next topic. Change log entries from multiple repositories. So this is more of a statement of a challenge and then I don't know how to solve it yet. So what we get is the Jenkins weekly change logs, those things that look like this, Jenkins docs here. When I look at the change log for long-term support, or even better, when I look at the weekly change log, this change log, its content is collected automatically by a program that Tim Jacome wrote. Uh, and oh, it's yeah. done for every pull request that is submitted to uh, Jenkins Core. Okay, so it's not a release draft or it's something else. It is, it is definitely something else. And okay. it's something else because the thing it's creating is actually a YAML file that is a dated representation of these change log entries. Oh, okay. And, and so that's, that's a great help. That's much better than the old process where we created that data interactively. However, this change log is only extracted from Jenkins core. And there are times when, for instance, a packaging change, let's use one that's familiar to you, Bruno. <laughs> The SSH, the agent packaging now includes ARM 32-bit, right? Yes, yes, you're and right. That, that probably should be in a change log because mm -hmm. it was very much an added capability and it was an added capability that became visible about the same time as a particular Jenkins controller release. So it would it, it wasn't specifically tied to a controller release, but it's it would be effective to put it in there. But yeah. we never look at that repository for changes and therefore, we never detect to add it to the change log. I see. And, and there's here's a, a more a very specific example, this Java 17 one. So we added Java 17 support into the Windows installer. Yes, which is not part of the core, so it's not in the change log. Right, but it very much is core in the sense that from that install page, I can download the, the Windows installer directly. So it seems reasonable to say, hey, this thing probably should be in a change log. You're right. Now the challenge though is, and, and I think it might be feasible to in, in extend the program to read multiple repositories. It's reading one now. Why, why couldn't it read multiple? <laughs> or yeah. we could port the tool to the other repositories so that each of them is willing to contribute. You know, I'm I'm open to any one of those, but the challenge for me is then if we did that, how would the changelog generator know what to include? Yeah, you're right. Because we don't use release tags on the packaging repository. Mm -hmm. Right. And and we don't we don't use them there because we don't really have any use for a release tag on a packaging repository. Release core. Packaging is just tools. So for me, this is one I think I need to discuss it with Tim Jacome further. I I may just bring it to a to the Jenkins developer list as a discussion topic and <laughs> see if ultimately I could just take it up in private email with Tim, but I think a, a developer list topic may be the best way to say, hey, what's a healthy way to do this? Yeah. Any suggestions there, Bruno? Things that you've seen work well elsewhere? Oh, no, nothing as complex as that. I've never seen anything this way. You know, change log more, most of the time are done when people think about that. Uh, the way you do, we do in Jenkins is already a very good step. Um, so, no, I have never seen that elsewhere for the time being. Okay. No. All right. But then that's super interesting. Uh, the, the thing that you want to, bring everything together um, totally makes sense. And I would love to see that working. Yeah, well, and and it's it's guided self-interest, right? I'm, I'm interested in it because then it reduces the number of times that we the docs sig misses a change log entry because we didn't insert mm -hmm. it interactively. Yeah, great. All right, I will bring it to the, bring it to the, I will ask in the Jenkins developer mailing list. Last last topic then is the change log and release guide for 2.346.3.
We've got a request already sent by Tim Jacome looking for the release lead. We don't have a volunteer yet, but I hope early next week to find a volunteer to take it. Great. And that's all that I had. Any other topics from you, Bruno? No, I don't. Thanks for asking. All right. Let's call ourselves done for today. Thanks very much. You're welcome. My pleasure.